All right, we are live. We are live. Uh, we are back for another episode. This is the Real Sports Fan Podcast. Your host, Lance Wilson. It is Monday, July the 19th, 7.01 p.m. And got a very special guest, uh, class of 03 reunion here that we're having. And I got the great, the legend, Pokemo City, Peace City, as they call it, Eddie Pooh Bear Miller. Eddie, what's good, bro? Not much, man. What's going on? What's going on? Man, man, I'll tell you, man, I've been looking forward to this one, man, for sure, man. Ever since we uh first reached out to you and, and like I said, chatted up with you again this morning, man. A lot, lot of buzz out there, man. So, I you say, man, I appreciate you uh, hopping on the show. That's bro, man. So. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, before, uh, you know, we get into your journey, man, really just, you know, for, for the new people out there that might be uh, looking at the show for the first time, uh, this is the Royal Sports Fan Podcast. Uh, we are live on Facebook. Uh, we will have the uh, episode also uh, on YouTube tomorrow, so I'll make sure uh, we have the link for that. You can go and uh, subscribe to the Real Sports Fan Podcast. I uh, have a lot of a lot of different guests uh, that's been on. A lot of guys also from the South. Uh, like I said, we got Eddie tonight. We've had uh, Bobby Brown. We've had Andre Collins, Todd Northam, also from Peace City. A lot of guys, you know, that 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 has come on. So, you know, I'm I'm, I'm definitely uh, grateful for that. You know, these guys come on and. And talk about the journey, man. And um, I think you had a cousin that um, comment on Facebook, and he he really said it good. Is it's it's good to give people their flowers while they can smell them, and, and that's exactly why I do this, man. I do it for love. I do it to show love. I do it, uh, you know, to uh, let people know, you know, what you did. Because man, it's crazy, man. We've been <laughs> I don't want to feel too. We've been out of school almost twenty years, bro. So you know, sometimes you got to remind people. You know, you got the young cats come up. You know, obviously they've heard and things, but. Sometimes, you know, just, just going through the history and, and then the journey, man, like we don't always know what it took for you to get to where you got to, you know, and, and, and that's really what this is about uh, and be able to give you a flower while you can still sell them, man. So this is the most I'm going to talk, you know what I mean, before I give you the questions and stuff like that. But again, man, I want to say, you know, I appreciate you, you know, jumping on. I appreciate you having me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, just, you know, first and foremost, man, just talk a little bit about, uh, you know, childhood, man, just growing up in Pocomoke and, um, you know, just a little bit about your childhood and what what that was like. Yeah, well, I mean, before I started school in the majority of my childhood, a lot of people don't know, I spent and I grew up in Virginia, in Atlantic, Virginia. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's still it's still on the Eastern Shore, you know, but uh, yeah. just a little, I mean, 10, 15 minutes south of Pocomoke. You know, and that was, right. that was love. I really didn't didn't play basketball. I mean, I played all the time growing up, but I was always getting my butt kicked. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, never, that's what's up. And it never deterred me from keeping on. You know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. And and what what uh you know what prompts you? You know, you talked you talked about you know the, the the lessons of ball as I call them. You know, going out there and you know you know obviously you had to put in hard work to get to the player that you uh, became and and still is a great player. But talk about, you know, when did that basketball journey for you started to start, you know, in Virginia, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, uh, who, who put the ball in your hands, basically. Um, it started, it started in Virginia. Yes. Yeah, uh, park and rec at our Arcadia High School, actually. You know, as a kid, we played there all the time, every summer. Um, that's when, mm-hmm. that's when it all started. It started there. I got a love for it there. You know what I mean? Never wanted to shoot the ball, but then people just kept telling me shoot. <laughs> So once I, I mean, once I started putting it up there, started going in, I just took, took that and uh, gained another a lot of love for it, and that that just means I want, want to be good at it, be great at it, actually. That's what's up. That's what's up. And when did you uh, what what you know, what age did you uh, end up moving to Pokemon? Um, I moved to Pokemon before I started, actually, before I started middle school, I believe. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And it's funny too that you uh you know you mentioned Arcadia because I got a stat later. One of the one of the great games you had in high school, I think it was your twelfth grade year was against Arcadia as well too. You might not even remember that, but I'm a I'm gonna pull that up later, you know, for you. Um yeah, but but talk about, you know, I know you said for middle school, talk a little bit also though about some of the rec ball you played when you moved to Peace City and also about the um, the AAU journey as well, if you don't mind. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, once we got the got the Pokemon 
I mean, I, it was a lot. It was a different ball game because they played together. We didn't have, really have anywhere to go when I was in Virginia, so we played outside mostly, um, other than the summertime mm-hmm. at, at the high school in the park and rec league zone. But uh, they had a Salvation Army and Pocomoke. Um, mm-hmm. That's where everywhere. That's where everybody went, and uh, a lot of competition. I mean, if you if you're not running and you're not playing, you're gonna be sitting. You know, what I mean, you gonna have a long way. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, that's how, yeah. that's, how, that's how, how, I mean, a lot of people played back then. We all played actually. Mm-hmm. And and when you play like that together, outside of being in high school, when it starts that young, I mean, the chemistry just grows greater. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point, man. And like you said, you know, chemistry means a lot. And when you've been started playing with guys at a young age, and then you guys just get better together, grow together and stuff like that, you know, you, it, it really takes off. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and talk about, you know, maybe for some people that, you know, don't know, I know, I know we know, but man, talk about some of the guys, you know, rec ball, AAU, you know, that you, you know, you know, play with and, and, and stuff like that. If you don't know. Uh, well, yeah, rec ball. I mean, we had, and just in our class alone, we had a lot of guys. And then in the older classes, uh, you got Brooks Croswell, Mark Dennis, mm-hmm. you got Branch Davis. You know, yeah. you got Javon Schoolfield, you got Tony Tall, Gary Laws, Nate mm-hmm. Laws, you know, mm-hmm. Ty. All, yeah. like, you got unlimited Hoopers, you know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. there's a lot more, uh, if I miss your name, I apologize, but there are a lot more that are that were that were dogs back then, man. And you had and you just had to man up. Exactly. Exactly. And 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 also, man, like I always tell people too. And, and it might be this case for you, maybe not, but I always say, like, even at Easton, like, you don't always get to see, like, everybody always doesn't play when you get to high school. Right. You know, some people, you know, maybe something happened during rec ball or AAU, maybe it was grades and stuff like that, but the competition is to get you ready for ball, you know what I mean, really, you know, really stands out. Um, talk a little bit about, I know your favorite player, and he's also one of my top five favorite players growing up was T-Mac. Uh, anybody else besides and, and 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 when I read that man, it's so you like it's it's, so, it's your build like oh I don't see too much longer but just the way you played and stuff like that. But talk a little bit about was there anybody else you looked up to whether they was in the league, uh, older people whether they you know was in Pokemon Salisbury. You know talk talk a little bit about some influences. Oh man, just MJ himself. That's mm-hmm. my, that was, that's my all time favorite. You know what I mean, T Mac came mm-hmm. after after MJ, but MJ was the, is, and still is the ultimate GOAT, man. Um, yeah, he is, he I is. We'll ever, I don't think we'll ever see a player as, as great as he was. But yeah. um, just the, the older players that I played against, I mean, that I didn't play against, but played, that got to watch growing up, man, you know, in Virginia, definitely Kevin Cropper and, 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 and Pokemon, just all the older guys, you know what I mean? Terrence Davis and all those guys, you know what I mean? You watching them. And, right against them and even even playing at the courts and Pokemon playing just playing out there man you got guys that you know I mean names you don't even know or don't hear of just you know I mean for unknown reasons but Mm -hmm. that that groom you to be be what you can be on that court man they're not there just for right be out there playing they're teaching you lessons while you're playing because that's you know I mean yeah yeah from from their mistakes I guess you say yeah that means a lot. That means a lot. Um, you know, let's get into, uh, you know, for, you know, go into high school because, uh, you know, like I said, man, your, your journey is amazing and the steps you've taken to get, you know, we got to talk about a lot of levels here. So let's even get into, uh, you know, high school, uh, uh, JV and, and whatnot. What, what do you remember about, you know, going into your ninth grade year, you know, going into your first year? Of high school ball on J. What do you you know? Just tell me something. Maybe you remember about that or about the season or anything you want to share. I, mean, I was, I was. We were. I mean, because we we played together all the way growing up. You know what I mean. So we it was kind of calming and, and I had a lot of confidence going in. But it's when you walk out those doors and you see that different. It's it's just different. And mm-hmm. when you get on yeah, the it court, is. Everybody's gonna be a little nervous, a little jittery. So you never know what to expect once those nerves kick in. But that that journey, man, which is it's, it's amazing. Because what we did on the court as freshmen and sophomores on JV were unheard of. I mean, we, we might have lost three or four games. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And one of the – Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. My bad. 
No, I was, I was just saying, and that's just that's a big build because you you motivating the, the next guys that got to come up, which is varsity, you know, and yeah, just the love just grow. Exactly, exactly. What what I was gonna say, which when you said you know the number of games y'all lost, which is very few. Do you do you remember? Uh, and like I said, man, you played in a million games, so some of these games I might remember, you might not. But do you remember when y'all came down Easton, uh, Pokemon Easton JV, uh, our, our ninth grade year? Vividly, but I, I do remember East. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny. It's funny, man. Because ninth grade, uh, me and Tony, you know, we we ended up becoming real good friends, man. We ended up uh, going to UMBS together. So, man, we would sit, man, for so long and just talk about, you know, that's when I, I first actually, you know, knew about you and Tony and and, and and Javon. You know, me and Javon, we used to talk a lot too, you know. And 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 man, you could shoot it like you didn't. So, you know. You know, when where did the shooting come from? Like, where you know what, you know, it's one thing to play, right? It's one thing to play and, and say I'm out there, but it's different to shoot the ball and to shoot the ball like you did, even at that age, even at early age. So, you know, where did that shooting ability, you know, start developing at? Um, growing up, I always shot at, at goals that were were much higher than I was. So it's just mm. never start just trying to get it up there, and then once you get it up there, you gotta. It's just repetition. My my mother also played basketball when she was in high school, and my oh okay, they were athletes. So, but man, she taught me a lot as well. She's a lefty. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Shout out my biggest for real. That's what's up. That's what's up. And w- one of the things, man, I've always wanted to ask, and and this is another thing that I remember. I remember uh, our tenth grade year. Uh, and it's good to say ours. Cause I got a, I got another O three. You know, guy, I had I had TJ Brown for a while and a few weeks ago, so it's good saying my O three brethren. Okay. Um, but our 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 sophomore year, uh, we came to Pokemo, and I remember sitting down, uh, watching, you know, getting ready, you know, getting ready to watch the JV game, and you know, the game started, you know, this this, this, this skinny light skin, you know, young boy hits one three, goes around the screen, hits another three. I'm like. Who is this? I'm like, hold up, that's Eddie. What, what is he doing? Why is he on JV? I, 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 you know, I mean, I, I didn't know what was going on, and I remember, bro, you had like 33, 34, and I don't remember too many JV scores, but I remember that you had like 33, 34, maybe 35 on JV, like, because I remember telling my boys, like, yo, y'all got, y'all got to guard him. You know what I'm saying? But I, I didn't understand honestly why you were still on JV. So talk a little bit about about that because that's always something i wanted to ask you man for the longest is why why weren't you i know you ended up getting moved up but talk about why you started on jv and also if you don't mind talk about when you end up ended up going up to varsity right well i mean i started on jv just because talent wise in pokemon then that time we had there were there was a lot of talent you know what i mean the older older Mm -hmm. classmen older other than me it was talent pretty talented you know what i mean it's Mm -hmm. at that point it's it's a it's a balance you just stay where you are numbers thing yeah yeah numbers thing and so that was, um, and moving up, that was a, it was a great experience because I always wanted to play with those guys. You know what I mean? It was mm-hmm. my sophomore year and most of them that I wanted to play were moving out besides Ty and uh, Rob Sykes and, and guys mm-hmm. that were uh, going in as their seniors. Um, mm-hmm. But the experience just playing with those guys, man, gained, gained a lot of knowledge from them. Um, wouldn't trade it for the world. Gotcha. And the only reason for me it was it was a surprise, and I understand, like you said, the numbers game. But if I'm not mistaken, when we played against them, and, and by the way, we got we got blown out. I never forget the first first play of the game. I told Ty when he was on last year. First play of the game, we missed a shot. Ty comes off the catches off the backboard, two hand don't. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, you know, it's just, it was just it just went down here for never. But anyway, but Tony and Joe and, 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 and Schoolfield was on varsity. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's why I didn't know like why you know they were on there. Not saying they were supposed to be. Cause they were great players as well, but you weren't. So that's why, I, you know, I always wonder, you know what I mean? That, but I understand, you know, the, the numbers game, you know, JV and, you know, the varsity. When, when did you end up moving up to varsity? What game? Do you remember what game that was? Or I think it was both right, right after the JV season ended, right before the playoffs started. Oh, okay. 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 So it was, okay. Okay. I didn't know if it was, if it was sooner than that or not. Okay. And talk about that, um, that journey. Um, you know, get moved up for the playoffs. Um, you know, like you said, you named some of the guys, uh, especially uh, Torrance Davis. I mean, he was a beast on the um, on the backboard. You know, and scoring when we when we went there and played y'all, um, he was hurt early in that season. 
um, his uh, my, my our tenth grade year, um, he was hurt. Um, but talk about you know how it was playoffs. Cause like you said, you know JV's one thing, but you know now it's playoffs. You know, and you guys had uh, you know some some battles you know with a lot of teams. So you know you know talk about how it was to to, to move up you know for the playoffs. I mean, it, it was tough. It's a tra- it's a big transition from from JV to varsity. It's a lot more physical, and you know what I mean. Just a lot more to handle mentally, you know what I mean? Because the, the plays are similar, but there's different alterations to the plays that are made that you gotta that you gotta remember. But other than that, just to comp, just competing every day in practice was it, it made you better, you know. Even if you didn't touch the floor, just being out there, you know, what I mean, competing against those guys and, and being able to be a part of it was was good for you mentally and and, and confidence wise. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, and and you named some of those other guys who, you know, Brooks Crosswell, uh, I, I think it was Alex uh, McIver, uh, a lot of those guys too. That, yeah, that, that was on that team um, as well. Um, and you guys ended up having a a, a battle, uh, and I'm sure you remember this game because you know we'll as we go through, you know, sophomore, junior, senior, you know, I'm, I'm sure it, it uh, makes sense. But Snow Hill, uh, Snow Hill. Uh, in the playoffs, uh, tough loss. Uh, Tony Harmon, if I'm not mistaken, had like 31, I think, I think 30, 31 that game, 30, 31 that game. Uh, what, what do you remember just about that? I mean, like I said, it was a, it was a tough loss. You guys had only uh, had lost, uh, I think, two or three uh, prior to that. You know, so what do you, what do you remember specifically about that that Snow Hill game against Tony Harmon, Jarrell Harmon, those guys? Man, it, it's a dog fight. Anytime Pokemon and Snow Hill play, it, that's a, that's what you got to – that's what mm-hmm. you gotta, Expect as a fan. That's exactly what it's going to mm-hmm. be. I mean, I don't know. I think we split during the season. They split during the season, mm-hmm. and then I mean, going in, you know, when it was going to be physical. It, I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah. To watch. It was amazing to be a part mm-hmm. of. It. I mean, Tony Harmon, the yeah. on our display, and yeah, he was yeah. great. Rel was great. You know, but we had great guy Terrence. That we all played good. Everybody played their game. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely, I'm sure, uh, one of them games I wish I could have seen because it was a uh, it was a three point game. They beat y'all sixty to fifty seven. They got a big steal at the end uh, to kind of seal it, you know. So I can imagine, you know, being a part of something like that, you know, you know, was an amazing game to be a part of, even in a loss, you know, even in a loss. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, learn learning experience for sure. Uh, and it looks like yeah, they actually um, ended that game uh, on a nine one run. Uh, you guys played them at UMES, and they ended on a nine-one run. So, what what did that do though for your confidence, and also, like you said, from a learning experience for the next year? Because now the next year, you know, okay, you, you're going to your junior year. You know, you, you're going to be starting on varsity. You know, the, the whole time. Talk about the work. I always, you know, every time I have a, a great player on here, I always talk about like talking about the work that you put in. Talk about the work you put in during the summer between your your, your sophomore and your junior year. Oh, it's non nonstop basketball. Eat, sleep, breathe, everything. Everything was a result of just supported basketball. It wasn't a day I didn't wake up and I'm on that court. I was either whether it's going and playing five different places all day long, just catching record wherever I could. You know what I mean? And that that alone just and and going and playing by myself, just being my just out shooting by myself. You know what I mean? Going to the wide, lifting and shooting by myself. Just little small things. And that helped. It all helped. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you said it right there too. You know, when you said, you know, it's one thing to play, and we don't get me wrong, we always got to play and be a part of games. But that last part you said, you know, going to shoot by yourself. You know, everybody didn't do that. Everybody didn't want, want to wake up. You know, when it was hot outside or, or early on, and you know, I try to tell you know you the young guys, man, that you know you got to put the work in. You know, it's easy now, man. You know, especially where the NBA is now. You see. Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, those guys, and Daniel Letter, all these guys shooting these threes, but they didn't start off shooting threes. And you're, I mean, you're a prime example too. You know, you know, we started in and worked our way out, and you know, and, and we we perfected that thing and, and, and kept on doing it. You know, so I appreciate you even sharing about you know some of that work you put in, you know, between those years. So, like you said, man, y'all was coming back with a strong team. You know, uh, you were losing uh, 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 Torrance Davis, but uh, you still had you know you Javon Tony. Uh, Gary Laws, uh, you know, Nate Laws, all those guys. And you still got the big guy in the middle, 
uh, Todd Northam. So, you know, who, 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 like I said, man, when he was on, I told him, you know, when we went down there in my sophomore year and played him, I thought he was a senior that year. And, you know what I mean? And he was only a junior. I was like, he talked to me. I was like, you coming back another year? I was like, oh, Lord. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but you guys, man, uh, you know, you guys are on a mission. You guys are on a mission. So, you know, talk about that junior year. Um, there was an article that the Daily Times wrote for you, and it said Quiet Warrior. And, and that's exactly what you still are. Like you say, you you know, you, you're, you're a quiet warrior. You, you're a man of a few words, but you, you let your, your place speak on the court, you know, for you. You know, so talk about that year because you, you ended up leading uh, the South Bay side and scoring uh, basically about 19 a game. Uh, and also uh, your rebounding, uh, about about six uh, rebounds a game and also three steals. So, you know, talk about a little bit about your junior year and uh, your production there. Uh, man, it's just coming in trying to trying to be the best player I could be for my team. I mean, we all we all that's what we all wanted. You know, what I mean, we all had each other's backs. We were all determined to go and win a state championship. We didn't want to come up short. You know what I mean, that's what we based that's what we based our season off of coming out and and, and we just try to fulfill that that promise to each other. Right, right. And and you know, I talked I talked a little bit about you know your shooting ability, um, and how great. I mean, how great a shooter was. And I want people to listen, not a good shooter, not a great shooter, you know, Eddie was, but your leaping ability. Man, where, you know, and where did the hops come from? Man? I mean, talk about, you know, was it a natural thing? Was it, you know, you, you know had the jump, jump shoes on back, back then, the jump. So, you know, talk a little bit about leaping ability because one of the things I was reading about, as good as a shooter you was, you even said that you would rather dunk on people because it ignited the crowd. Right. right, and they got the crowd going. Yeah, so you know, talk a little bit about your your, your leaping ability. I mean, it's just kept, I just kept trying, kept trying. Mm-hmm. I mean, repetition, 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 and sooner or later, once you once you get once you get your fingertips over there that one time, you're just gonna <laughs> you, you're gonna keep on, you know, what I mean? keep on keeping on. I, it helped that I gained a few gained a few inches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little better. But you know, what I mean, after figuring out that I can get up there and do it and put adding a little work in it, whether it's just walking, walking around all day on your tiptoes or you're know, doing, you know what I mean? Sitting on step on steps, doing toe raises, whatever, whatever it takes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Little, yeah, that's little, a good, yeah. The stuff that we do back then that we see other people do that we are, or we see on TV that we do it. You know what I mean? We don't think it's working, but it, it's, it's working. We didn't yeah. have the same type, yeah. of, type of equipment and, and stuff that, that they have now. Nah. You know what I mean? When you shooting that, you nah. shooting that ball by yourself, you got to run and go get that thing. We ain't got no net. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when they come back to you, or, hey, or one it, it'll shoot to you. Nah, we ain't had no net. So you got to go. You, you, yeah, you shoot something long, you got to go get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to go get that thing. So you want to make sure, like you said, you make it. You know what I mean? It don't go way off somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's you funny. Tired. You definitely you right about that. You got to five times in a row. You could be a little tired. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure, man. Hey, that's funny. That's for sure. And um, like you said, man, I mean, you guys, you know, basically ran through uh, every team that came your way, you know, but the one team, obviously, not just you guys, I, I wouldn't even say you had problems with because you, you guys had some close games, but that everybody had problems with our dream year was, was Waha. You know, we played them as well. We went to Waha and, and you know, we got uh, destroyed, you know, by, I mean, such a great team with Craig Wander, Bubby Brown, uh, you know, Kyle Camper, uh, Carl Miles, John Wolf. I mean, the, the, uh, Jermichael Mitchell. I mean, the list goes on. So talk about that that Pokemoke and Waha robbery that year. I mean, because you 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 guys were two great teams, and uh, you guys are going to you know as we go forward a little bit in the story, you know you know iron sharpen iron. So I think that also helps you guys as you move forward. But talk a little bit about that. Man, those are one of those games the night before you can barely sleep, man. You just mm-hmm. want anxious, want the next day to get there because you already know before before that school bell ring, you got you got people lined up outside, can't wait to get in. Every mm-hmm. every game sold out, but it guaranteed by the midway through the JV game, everything sold out. Yeah, just yeah. it's just man, it's, it's it's being being one to be competitive, and that's what we mm-hmm. did. All of us, you know, we wanted mm-hmm. to be great so mm-hmm. they, they were a good team. We were a good team, and we were determined to go in there and and, and try to win. I mean, we, I think we lost each game by less than five points. 
Yeah, some, yeah, some, he did. Mm-hmm. They let you know Lona did. It was a dog fight. It was a battle. And it, yeah. with the great players and athletes that we had on those on both of those teams, man, it was good basketball going on. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. And like you said, man, I mean, and, and in the South, I mean, it wasn't too many nights off that you guys had. So, like, you know, the, the wins you had, you know, and, and I, I think it was Ty that, that I was reading about that said it that, if you can get 20 wins, you know, a season in the South Bayside, you're doing something. Yeah. Because, you know, like you say, we talked about the Snow Hills, which are a big rival. We talked about the Wild High. But also another rival, and you might got to correct me on this, because when I was talking to Andre Collins, you know, one of the teams that always came up was y'all, Poco- the Pokemon Crystal rivalry. Oh, yeah. So, you know, e- e- even – even in, and you answer me, because, again, I'm on the north side. But the biggest rivalry for y'all, was it was it Crisfield or was it Snow Hill? Talk to me a little bit about the rivalries, how the rivalries go. For for me, it was Snow Hill. Snow Hill and Wild High. Okay. You know what I mean? Those were the two that that were uh, were dominant back then with, with, along with us when, when I was coming up. But prior, prior to my year – you know what I mean? Like my my um my junior my sophomore year, my freshman year, it was Chris Field and Pokemon. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two great teams and they were they were those guys were pounding it up. Yeah, Andre, yeah. You know what I mean? That was when Javon was a Javon, Javon was playing as a Javon matched up with Andre as a freshman coming out. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I remember like it was yesterday, man. And, and that game was crazy. I, I was coming out of coming out of the locker room from getting dressed. Coming back out to watch the game, and I see Andre, Andre and Kurt Jackson uh, lock eyes, man. And he mm-hmm. comes across half, and he throws it up, and I'm standing right under there looking. He just, Kurt Jackson just catching, and everybody just going off. I'm like, oh boy, it's gonna be a lot. Man, <laughs> man, uh, uh, uh. It was something about y'all, way y'all gyms were structured too, that I, that I love because, if I'm not mistaken, obviously you can sit on the side, but I think y'all had seats under the basket yep. too, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, man. So I always love that. Behind the basket. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that always made it dope for me. Like that, 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 that was cool. And then the thing that I hated, man, and I don't know if it was against y'all or, or Snow Hill when we went there, but y'all yeah. would give the, y'all, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> y'all would give our names on the program too. So, so they would know who, they would know who we was too, like on the program. So I, I never forget, they would be calling my name. I'm like, I didn't know who I am. Like, you know what I mean? But y'all would have it on the program. So, <laughs> That home court was serious, man. Yeah, it was serious. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. That's yeah, cool. So a lot back then. Yeah, yeah, it was, man. It meant a lot, man. Everybody's sitting right on the floor. They're sitting right there yep. too. You taking yep. you taking the ball yep. out of bounds. You got fans behind you that can that can <laughs> physically touch. Exactly. <laughs> oh man, it was a lot on your mental. <laughs> Yeah, that all right. They breathe the right. You can feel the hot That's air right. right on the back of your neck, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it wasn't nothing like that. It wasn't nothing like that. And one of the games you, y'all had against Chrisfield, was, which I the reason I was asking, you know, I always know about that was one of the rivals. But y'all, you had a, a one point victory on them, uh, where Maurice Douglas almost won it. Uh, for the, I don't know if you remember that game. That was your junior year. Uh, and it was a, a one point win, fifty to forty nine. So that that's one of the ones I was reading. I was like, wow, that was a you know big time game. So that one, that yeah, was, man, that was a great battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that always sticks out. Uh, but like you said, man, I mean, you know, you had you know twenty five against Bennett, and you know uh, twenty seven this game, and, and and just your scoring, you know, was impressive. But you know, you know, it was also though your, your rebounding, you know. You know, what made you go in there and get the board you got? Because I think a lot of people, you know, they might, you know, look at the stat sheet or if you're just watching a game as a fan, you see you're scoring, you're shooting, you're dunking. But talk about how you were able to get in there and mix it up on the glass and help Todd and those guys out on the board. I mean, it, it was – Dave Bird said it was – I mean, he told me it was needed. I mean, he said if you want to play on the next level and as a scorer, you have to be great at something else other than just scoring. You know what I mean? And, and mm. rebounding creates more opportunities. So that's, hey, I thought about it like that. Hey, the more rebounds mm-hmm. I get, the more I'm going to be able to get, get back down to that <laughs> more offense. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. It was just a a goal that I needed to meet. And that, that it helped a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And, and since you mentioned uh, Coach Bird, man, you know, talk, talk a little bit about, you know, what, what Coach Bird, you know, meant to you, how great of a coach. He was. Um, he, he seems like one of those coaches that that really uh, backs his players up and, and and really 
uh, let you play your game, you know, which is important. You know, talk a little bit about, about coach before we move on. Yeah. Uh, he was, he was an amazing coach. One of the best coaches I've ever had, man, you know, and it, it was more than a coach. He's, you know I mean? He, he, he taught you lessons along the way as well on and off the court. I mean, he, Hey, you better not be outside doing anything too late. You know what I mean? Cause he's coach Burry used to ride the streets late night. You know what I mean? You'd be in a little bit of trouble. But he, you know, I mean, it's just <laughs> just teaching you structure at a at a young age. I mean, other than coaching, yeah. the court, he tried, he wanted to teach you structure. You know, what I mean, he, he actually cared, he cared. You know, what I mean, he mm-hmm. cared about all the, all the mm-hmm. kids, and uh, he wanted everybody to see. Yeah, that means a lot when coaches out there making sure you're not getting into a trouble rod and making sure you making curfew and stuff like that. That's a real coach, someone that's investing in you as a man. You know, and as a person, so yeah, that that, that means a lot. That definitely means a lot. Uh, I want to go to the comments real quick too, because I got a couple comments. Can't what's up, Can't? Uh, uh, Kyle, I got to get you on here too, man. I, I need I need you on here. I get you on here next season. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, Kyle. We're gonna talk about you a little later in the show too, like that, that one two connection y'all had at Cecil. So so hopefully you stay on and get to check that out later. Uh, and yeah, and some and, 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 <laughs> for sure. And um, I, I got a I got a question for you. My 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 coach, my old coach is on here, and he wanted me to ask you uh, if you knew a, a Miss Susan Bird uh, Pusey, P U S E Y. Susan Pusey, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, talking coach that Pogo Mo. Yeah, he went to co- he went to college with her, and right. uh, he said he thought she might have been a girls uh, field hockey coach too. And I know she passed a few years ago, but yeah, he just wanted to he Very just wanted good. to say that. One of the most dominant field hockey coaches I've ever met in my life. Wow, wow. And can't forget about Allen Bird on the soccer side, man. They, I think and you know what? Out of the four years of my high school career, yeah. they won state championships. I was going to say, man, because I was also reading, I'm glad you brought it up, because um, you guys had a lot of guys that played soccer yep. on the basketball team. Gary, Tony, yep. uh, all those. I think maybe you might have been the only one that, did, that didn't play did you, didn't play soccer, but a lot of those guys, like you said, y'all were state champs in soccer. I was reading about that. Um, but did you? Did you, you? I know you didn't play soccer, but did you run cross country? I did. I did. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I said you were second team cross country. I said, look at Eddie, second team <laughs> cross. Yeah, 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 yeah. I checked it out. I checked it out. But yeah, I'm glad you brought up the soccer. Getting out there, getting that win right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. But yeah. Thanks, thanks, coach. Yeah, he definitely. Uh, no problem, coach. No problem. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, thanks for thanks for sharing too about uh about Coach Bird. Uh, so, like you said, you know, a couple couple of tough losses against Wahai, but you know, now we're get, getting ready as we fast forward to the playoffs. Um, you know, like you said, you guys had a a tough loss against Snow Hill the year before. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you guys get to see Snow Hill again. You know, so so what do you remember now about that? You know, about hey, it's it's, it's payback time. It's time. So, what do you remember about that game? Oh, we just went in locked in, man. Hey, we said it's payback time. They they stopped our boys from getting across that bridge, so it's time for us to do the same. You know what I mean? We mm-hmm. every time we meet, it's it's go time. We already know it's gonna yeah. be, hey, it's gonna be a tough game anytime we play them. So we just got to come out and 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 throw that first punch. Uh, that's what's up. Yeah, that's what's a hard like you said, hard fought win. You know, you guys uh, you know, beat them. And how how did it feel to know you were going across the the bridge to play in in the final four, um, you know, just just I mean, you know, I, I didn't experience that, you know, uh, you know, what was that feeling like, you know, knowing that you you can go across the bridge and and because you know when you go across the bridge, man, one thing I love about the shore, it don't matter if you're in the south, you're in the north, if the shore, if one of the shore teams go over there, Everybody we're going to support, you know what I mean? We're going to support because one thing I didn't mention, you know, for a lot of people, the year before y'all lost to Stonehill, Stonehill eventually ended up going and winning, mm-hmm. you know, and, and winning it now. You guys go represent the one A, and then you've got you know Kyle and them and those boys, uh, Waha, Bubby and them, Craig, two A representing. So for for me, and I remember me, I was happy for both of y'all. You know, we were a two A school, um, you know. So being able to know that you know we got you know two Eastern Shore teams representing uh, the Eastern Shore, you know, you know, how, how did that feel? Oh, I felt amazing, man. I was happy for them, and and as well as they were, you know, I mean, happy for us. Uh, we all, we all, we both wanted to get go over there and uh, do what do what we did, and that was win. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I told, Kyle, I think I told Kyle because at back that time, around that time, we in the summertime we played AAU ball together, which we'll I know we'll get into later. But yeah, um, but I told Kyle, I said, man, hey, it's, 
we both got to come back home with some hardware. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that makes sense, man, because you saved your best as great as you played during the season. I, I said it: nineteen points, six rebounds, three steals a game. You elevated your game when you got to the final four. You start off with with uh, South Hagerstown. Uh, you guys win eighty two to fifty eight. Uh, you had 23 points on, on a very efficient shooting, man, 8 of 14 shooting. Uh, what do you remember about that game against South Hagerstown? Uh, we just knew we had to come in and play play good defense, man, play good defense because they had a structured offense, you know what I mean? And, and we knew, already knew coming in we were going to score the ball. It's just it's just about mm-hmm. locking up and getting stops. You're at, you're at a different stage, so every, every possession matters. Yeah, and that makes sense, too, that you said that because you guys, when you talk about defense, you guys ended up forcing 21 turnovers. Uh, 13 it was in the first half. So you guys definitely came up with that mindset. You know, like you said, you had 23. Uh, Javon had uh, uh, 19 and five um, as well. So and, and you added uh, eight rebounds to go along with that. So um, so now uh, you guys get ready to play uh, Dunbar. And I don't I don't know why, man, but for some some reason for some teams or some some people, you know, they see Dunbar across the chest or something like that. Then you know they may get scared or they may get timid or so. And we can't play them, but you guys never had that mentality. You guys came in, went in there and said, they, "These guys cannot beat us. We're, we're gonna, you know, we're, we're gonna dominate. We're gonna go in there. You know, talk about uh, the game plan, if you may, and also just your mentality. You know, going into that game. Well, yeah, they had they had two guys that we we watched the game after uh, we watched their game that night before, and um, they beat the brakes off of some team, man. And, and, and both their two mm. starting guards had thirty apiece. Mm. And, and and they pretty much carried the team to the win. So I mean, I looked at Tony Mantle and, and said, "Hey, that does not happen tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There, there's no thirty and thirty tomorrow. We got we got right. to we got to chop that down and 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 will and will ourselves to a, to a championship, man. Me, me, Ty, Tony, our whole starting five, man. We went out there determined to not to beat. Y'all Long. did. Yeah, yeah, y'all did, man. I mean, because. And, and for people listening, when he's saying beat Dunbar, he don't saying he's not saying they won by one point. You know, they won by a few points. Man, they won eighty-eight to seventy. They beat Dunbar by eighteen points. Uh, Javon had twenty-nine and ten, and you had twenty-six and thirteen. Uh, and, and Ty added ten and eight. And uh, Tony does what Tony does, man. Tony, Tony, I always told him, you know, even when we used to talk all the time, man, his assist to tunnel ratio was always. Great. Oh, I mean, he, he didn't turn the ball over, man. Like, nine assists, one turnover. Like, you know, he was always going to be heady and very official with the ball. Um, but it, it, it talked about, you know, what you guys did. I, um, I think they had this big guy. I think it was Michael Thompson, Dunbar had. And, and you guys just took it, you know, right right to him and, and just did all you could do. You know what I mean? So you guys definitely came out tenacious and state champs, man. I mean, you know, talk about that feeling, man. State champs. Oh, it was an amazing feeling. It was amazing feeling. Going into it, we knew it was gonna. Going into the whole thing, we knew it was gonna be special because uh, a lot of people didn't know, but that was the last time that that was the same year that the Terps won a championship, and it was a, that was mm-hmm. the last time that anybody was gonna play in Cold Fieldhouse. Yeah, good point. Yeah, so it was just it was it was a hey, it was it was history. It's special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you, man, what what an amazing feeling, and uh, what an amazing season. And then also, man, like. You know, you might not even think about it then. Maybe you did, but I know even looking back, you know, you guys were, were going to come back regardless for another year. You juniors, but be able, but be able to send Ty out as a senior, you know, you know, and I talked to him like you said last year. I mean, that meant everything to him. You know what I mean? To be able to leave out, you know, with that state championship. You know what I mean? And, and talk a little bit, you know, because as we transition, I'm going to talk about your senior year and some of your teammates. But uh, you know, talk about Ty though, as, as a teammate, just how how dominant he was because the thing about Ty, what I realized too, playing against him, looking at a lot of his stats, some games he scored when he had to, some games he knew he was just going to be a defender. Some games he was just going to rebound. Uh, I know he ended up being, uh, um, I think, I think the player of the year that year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, but talk a little bit about, you know, Ty's impact. Man, Ty was, he was a leader in every aspect on the court, off the court. He just taught us a lot about the game that we didn't know. We're coming in because, I mean, he went through a lot. Not everybody mm-hmm. on the team went through what he, what he went through with losing, um, the tough mm-hmm. loss to Snow Hill and things like that. So with his wisdom, 
passing it down to us that helped us get to his level. And I mean, ultimately, that's the way we that's that's how we were able to will it up. He meant a lot to that team. Mm-hmm. A yeah. Lot. yeah. 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 He, he definitely did. He, he he probably, like you said, you know, it's safe to say the heart and soul, you yeah. know, of that team. And like you said, that 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 uh experience mm-hmm. and that input, you know, that, that that he had. And then plus he was just a good dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, like I said, we played. I mean, he 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 catch a dunk off the rim, and then he want to talk. He want uh, and then he didn't dunk on me, but but he, but then at the at the but then at but then at the foul line, he want to talk to you like nothing like nothing going on. He want to have a conversation with me, like you know what I mean? Like after he, after he dominates you, like like come on, man. That's it, man. That's it. That's it, man. That's it. So so that's cool, man. Like you said, state championship. You guys win it. Waha wins the two way. Um, so, so talk about, and you had mentioned a little bit about, uh, the, 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 the AAU, you know, and you could talk about whether it was, you know, going into your junior year or senior year, but man, the AAU team y'all had, and if I'm not mistaken, I, I know, it was, I know, it was, I know it was, I don't know if it was Trinity All-Stars, I'm probably getting the name wrong, I know it was Trinity something, but the team y'all had, when you talk about you and Kyle and, uh, I even remember, uh, um, B.A. Walker. I remember B.A. Walker, you know, all, all those guys. Talk a little bit about, you know, AAU, though, and, and how great of a team y'all had. Uh, it, was, it was it was amazing. R.I.P. Danny King. One of the, one mm-hmm, of the, for sure. One of the great coaches. You know what I mean? He, he brought Definitely. us all together and, and made it possible for us to, to travel and, and be able to do the showcase to the world what we had to offer, you know what I mean? And home mm-hmm. was special. Um, but – the team we had, we we, we were got a couple guys from across the bridge, or across across the bridge, and I guess the Northern Virginia area that we played with as well when we met for tournaments. And man, that that, that team was dangerous. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was real dangerous, man. And that's we, what I'm saying. We, we were elite athletes from each each team in different areas put together, and, and right, man, that was one of the greatest teams I played on as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because see, we we had you know over on this side we had the uh, ESAO Eastern Shore Athletic Organization. And, you know, we would see y'all, and man, I would be sitting there sometimes. It's amazing because when you saying y'all had super athletes, mm-hmm. man, y'all had some high flyer super athletes, man. Um, and, and and to have that much talent and not have any uh, selfishness, you know, and, and y'all and way y'all played together, and and you know, and I always I was I think I was telling somebody earlier like even. Uh, you know, Kyle, I, I respect him more and more, you know, as he get older, because one thing about Kyle, Kyle's one of those guys that he could score 30 if he wanted. But, man, Kyle, like, he like getting people involved and pounding that thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you guys had so many unselfish guys, man. It was just, it was amazing to watch. Yeah, it was amazing to watch. So, so definitely, uh, you know, you're talking about talent, man. It was, it was top notch. It was top notch. Really? So, yeah, yeah. So, uh, like you said, you know, state champs, um, you know, a lot of times, man, you know, you can talk about some more of the work you put in before your senior year because, you know, some people might get big headed or, you know, they might think, well, we state chance, there's nothing else to do. But you got a whole senior year coming left, and the only person y'all lost was Todd. Now, he was a big piece, don't get me wrong, big piece, huge piece. But you guys still had so much talent coming back with a lot of varsity experience with you, you know, Tony and Javon, especially, you know, playing, uh, you know, since your sophomore, you know, years and then. You, you you put in um uh uh Gary uh, Gary Laws Nate Laws uh, I think he's a call Gary I think he's a call Gary Baby Gary yeah, uh, but if I'm not mistaken yeah 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 Baby Gary you yeah. know I'm saying Nate shout out Nate I seen Nate on here uh, uh he shared the post shout out Nate uh, uh I think it was David Wilson uh those guys man you know what I mean so 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 talk about uh just y'all mentality after winning a state championship you know going into your senior season. It's crazy because you know how other team, other teams. I mean, bar, their varsity. You got you got some seniors, you got some juniors, you got some freshmen. You know, what I mean, it, you, you might have some sophomores. I mean, I'm just a mixture. But our team, mm-hmm. strict. Everybody was in the same graduating class of 2003. <laughs> you know, yeah. It was our whole class. It, it wasn't just that we had one yeah. player from that class. We had a whole team from that class yeah. that was that, that was going to go out there and get it every single night. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that made it special. That made it special, Ben. Yeah, like I said, that, I, yeah, I, and like I said, I know you haven't got to see the look, but I posted the. Um, you guys had two photos. You, you guys had one photo starting five. I'm, I'm talking about where y'all were dribbling the ball, and they took a picture. Then you had another one 
where y'all was sitting. You know, you was in the middle at two and two. And it was just kind of an iconic, you know, photo, you know. And if you don't mind, you know, kind of briefly, um, and, and, and not to, you know, not to single anybody out, but could you talk about individually what each person in that starting five did, you know, when it comes to, you know, Tony, I know we talked a little bit about him at the point guard, Javon, Gary, and David. Could you talk a little bit about what each of them brought, you know, to the team? Tony, he's a floor general, man. His IQ and his intelligence on, on from a point guard standpoint was, I, hands down, I'd take him any day. Any day. Mm-hmm. Javon, Javon, just, Javon was an all-around dog, man. Offensively, defensively, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna give you thirty, and he's gonna guard your best player. Yeah, all night yep. long for not yep. hey, ninety four feet from one end to the other end, and he's sure not. Yeah, I'm like, man, where is he getting all this energy from to do it on both ends? And that his 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 battery pack he had on him, man, was incredible, incredible. He was a dog, man. Yeah, yeah a true dog. Dave Wilson, Mister Fundamental. Yep. He, he's gonna he ain't gonna, he's he's gonna hit threes when he's get when he gets going, but his mid range man his one two dribble pull up was amazing. Wasn't the most mm. athletic, still found ways to 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 get in there and get it done. Definitely, and Gary, yeah. he was a sleeper man. Yeah, I, I love Gary. And Gary was a sleeper because at any given moment he could he, he could dunk on somebody too and get it going. Yeah. And if he plays mm-hmm. plays hard on defense. He's gonna guard your anybody out there one through five. He can go. He could guard mm-hmm. one through five. I don't care how big your five was. He's gonna get down there. And he's gonna bang with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's well said, man. And, and like you said, man, you you said it. I think that's why me and Javon uh, clicked and met early because, like you said, he was a dog, and he, and he you know, he would talk, and we would, you know, ninth grade, you know, chip our, our out there. You know, we talk a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But it was respect. You know what right. I'm saying? It was it was respect at the end of the day. And then, like you said, Gary, you know. Uh, the defensive mind that he had, but like I said, he could also go get it. You said it perfectly, you know, with, with, you know, with Tony, man. Me and Tony, you know, we talked about so much ball and talked about you so much, our freshman at UMBS, you know, about all that, you know, the season. And then uh, and then David, like I said, I, I even read, I think that he even had like a rugby background. So, you know, he was a tough, you know, he was a tough, tough kid. Uh, he took a lot of uh, big charges, you know what I mean? You know, a lot of big charges as well, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that, that starting five was, you know, was, was, was serious. And I remember being in the East and hearing about that starting five, uh, hearing about y'all and, and, and you know, being the competitors we was, we, we wanted to, you know, try to match up because, you know, at the North, we felt, felt like we had a, a, a great starting five, you know what I mean, as well with me, Gary, and uh, Mike Blake, Cavi, and, and Derek. So, you know, we would hear about y'all all the way in the North. And from people listening, you know, it wasn't social media then. You know what I mean? You know, if you hear, if you heard about somebody from, you know, all the way down to or over Salisbury, you know what I mean? It's for a reason. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's for a reason. Now, we used to hear about y'all guys. And then i never forget uh, a practice. And my coach, you know, he was like, did you hear about uh, Pooh Bear? I said, well, what happened? Uh, he, he had 40. I said, 40? Had 40 <laughs> against Parkside. <laughs> 40, yeah, 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 40 against Parkside. I'm just throwing out a couple. Because you, you a humble dude, man. So, look, I'm a – I'm gonna brag. I'm gonna brag for you tonight. Forty against Parkside your senior year, uh, thirty-one against North Dorchester. Uh, you you had another uh, 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 twenty-seven, uh, uh, twenty-one against Parkside. Excuse me. Uh, you had twenty in the first quarter against Decatur. You, you know, what I mean, on your way to thirty-three. Um, you know, you had thirty-nine and ten against St. Michael's. I don't think I played, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't think I played much that second half of the. <laughs> you, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess, and, pro- and to be honest, probably St. Michael's too, no disrespect to, to, to them. You know, we talk with County, you know, as well, so I, I can say that. But, yeah, I mean, the numbers you put up, man, it's just crazy. And then I talked about Arcadia. We mentioned that. You had 31 and 12 against them. So, yeah. you know, so I talked about you leading the Bayside and scoring your junior year at 19, but you elevated to 25, almost 26 a game, you know, I, I'm not going to ask where that came from because I know where that came from. But did you just know going into your senior year without Ty that you had to you had to score more, or was it just simply you know you were just doing it in the flow of the offense? You know, talk a little bit about your your scoring outburst, man. Because people, man, people were people weren't doing that, man. Just a little bit of both, man. A little bit of I, I knew I had to score more, and a little bit within the flow. You know what I mean? I it wasn't thinking about it. You know what I mean? Just went out there and played, mm-hmm. and it just came. Mm-hmm. Opportunities, man, are endless when you when you got a running offense. 
Yeah, 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 that's true. That's true. That's a good point. Because like you said, Tony's going to find you. He's going to push that thing. And he's going to find you, man. <laughs> as long as you're you running down that floor, boom. That's where, that's, that's that's where a little bit of that cross country came in at. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's if true. You don't get tired. You're going to beat everybody down the floor. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And that's fun. Yeah, that's true. That's what's up. That's what's up. So for, for people listening, um, I, 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 I said it some of the stats that, that, that uh, uh, I'm going to call you Pooper. I don't know if you want to me call Pooper, so I'm going to say Eddie. You know, the Eddie, the Eddie, Eddie mentioned. You see, I, I, you see, I didn't put it on the flower this morning. I was getting ready to. <laughs> I, I said, no, I don't know if you want that. <laughs> yeah, yes, I put. I, I had to put it on this though. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but, but the Eddie said, but you guys went undefeated during the regular season, which is crazy. You know, and but I, I, I specifically want you to talk about, you know, going undefeated. Yes, but how important was it for you guys to finally beat Waha? Because the year before. You know, y'all ended up winning the state title, but those two losses was to Waha. But you guys finally ended up going to Waha. Um, not only did you beat Waha, I mean, you might not even know this, but you guys broke a, a 33 game win streak for Waha and a 21 game home win streak for Waha. You know, talk about what it was like to, to finally get those guys both both games too. I secretly based my all season on do, on, get, on getting them twice. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I said, I said, going in, I said, man, look, that's the only two losses we had last season, man. I do not want that to happen this year, man. We got to get them. Yeah. And, but, yeah. man, yeah. It, was just, it was fun, man. Playing against Kyle Moran yeah. was always fun. Yeah. Yeah, Moran. Yeah, we're talking about him, too. Another dog. I mean, we had to play them that, we had to play them that year, too. They came down east, and it was, it was close. It was close, you know, to about the fourth, but Moran, man, we, you know, he was a big guy, and, and, and you know, we had a 6'9 guy, too, you know, but, but Moran, man, he, he was just different. You know, I mean, he, he was just different. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he could he could, he could could bang with you, but he could also, you know, hit the, hit the 17-footer, you know, if you need to, and he's a lefty, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just something different about those lefties, man. He's so crafty. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. That's it. That's it, man. We had, uh, you know, going forward a little bit, but – uh, we had a lot of great intramural teams. Uh, you know, Miesi ended up playing one year with us, uh, me, him, Bubby, and them. Uh, but, yeah, man, yeah. So, uh, the undefeated season, though, did you guys – I guess how I put it. Did you know – I mean, I know you didn't think you were going to go undefeated, but you expect to win every game. But, were, like, as you guys kept winning, did it come up? Did you talk about it? Or was it one of the things where you guys just literally took it game by game? I mean, once once we got to the – Towards the end of the season, we started talking about it. We started looking at the schedule and talking about it a little bit. But at the beginning, no. Man, we, we just enjoyed playing with each other so much, man. And we had so much fun out there on the court. We, we didn't think about it. We just went out there and played. You know what I mean? It was it was actually fun. Nobody cared yeah. about who was a superstar or who wasn't. You know what I mean? At, for, for, for us, we all were superstars. As long as we win, mm -hmm. no, one, one, no one person is more important than the other. Everybody plays a, plays their role and, and has a piece to put to the puzzle. You know what I mean? So... We took it like that, man. We all respected each other and just went out there and had fun. Put on the show for the people. That's what's up. That's what's up. And, and you had talked about what the starting five meant. I just want to run off some of the stats. And, and like I said, these stats don't tell everything that, you know, we talked about this before the show, you know, everything that goes into basketball. And there's a lot of things that don't show up in the stat sheet, you know, like charges and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I say you average 20, 25 and eight, uh, seven and a half boards, three steals. Uh, Tony averaged 10 and 8, you know, two and a half steals. Javon averaged 17, four assists, three and a half steals. I'm noticing while I'm looking at this, man, y'all got a lot of steals. Man, you talk about running. When you play defense like that, you get in the fast lanes, you guys are going out because then I'm looking, uh, baby Gary, he he had uh, average, average 10 and 5, but he had five steals a game. And then David almost a double double, 12 points, eight rebounds, two and a half steals. So, like, did, were you guys a big press team on, on the shore? Like, where did a lot of the steals come from? Y'all generate? Yes, sir. Ninety-four feet. Get down there, get mm -hmm. in them, get in the passing lanes, baby. That's how you get steals. Yeah. Get steals. Yeah. Love, yeah, you guys. Well, if it was yeah, a, you guys were in three quarter court press, a half court press, don't didn't matter. Full court, we're on. Yeah, yeah, yeah you guys, Bird, man. Y'all were y'all were definitely. In. Right, right, right. Part of it, man, just surprising people, man. Because you, you rattle, you rattle certain people. You rattle, man. They can't handle. That's true. That's true. That's true. A lot of people didn't know how to break a press either. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you know, they would start, you know, fumbling. We always push you to one side, so to force you to either 
make the long pass or, or you're gonna cut or pass it back all the way back around and ultimately hey you can't keep passing around before mm-hmm. that, that that violation comes or if you make them right. cross pass then somebody's gonna be in that lane and go get it right right so that makes sense that's gary got a lot of steals off that as well yeah yeah and it was showtime then oh, man. <laughs> it was showtime oh man <laughs> yes yeah, sir bring back some great memories but i'm sure i'm sure man so so yeah man so um like you said man y'all got in the passing lanes i'm looking at another game you, you played north dorchester had had, had 39 in but uh, i do want to uh, go to the playoffs um you guys end up playing uh uh it's crazy you guys end up playing both of the teams the year before that you play you, you play south Hagerstown again yeah. um you guys win um i think it was 72 to 60 um, if I'm not mistaken, this time, and then you guys end up having to play um, Dunbar again. Uh, what do you, What do you remember about about the Dunbar matchup this time, and, and especially the way they uh, played you, you know, this time um, as well? Oh, we knew going in that they were going to come and, and give it everything, give us give us their all. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We just got got by some of their best guys the year before, and 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 similar to. What happened to me my junior year with, with the guys losing to Snow Hill? I, I knew it was gonna be, it was gonna be a dog fight again. You know what I mean? Because they mm-hmm. just wanted that get back. It's a bad that, yeah. that get back leaves a bad taste in your mouth, man. You want to go yeah. back and yeah. something that, that that other people couldn't accomplish. And yeah, we knew it was gonna be tough. We knew it was gonna be tough, man. It, and, and we played it close throughout the first half and kind of let it get away from us a little bit in the third. But it was a it was a tough game. Especially senior year. Yeah, yeah. 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 And like you said, under, undefeated and, and whatnot. But like you said, I mean, you know, I'm sure it hurt at the time, man, but definitely nothing to to to, to put your heads down and bottom me You know, yeah. undefeated regular season, only loss to Dunbar. You know, they came out in a in a in a box of one of you and they actually tried to downsize and take the big out in the second half, and that's kinda of where they, you know, kinda of started getting the momentum. But you, you still had twenty seven and twelve in a Boston one where someone, you know, when a team knows a scout report and seen you before. So that's tough to do. You know what I mean? That, 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 that's, that's tough to do. I always tell guys, you know, and, you know, a lot of people understand whether it's, whether it's high school, college, pro, you know, you know, any pro league, you know what I'm saying? When someone has a scout report and these guys still go out and get their numbers, that's not easy. So, you you know, you still did that. But obviously I know you wanted the, you know, the championship, but, um, you know, back to back, but great season. Um, you know, the year before, you know, you made Mason Dixon uh, first team and um, Bayside, uh, you know, uh, as well. And then now your player of the year, uh, your senior year, you know, I gave the stats already. You know, what did that mean? What did that mean for you getting player of the year? I mean, like I said, I know you, you all about the team and your humble dude always have been. Uh, but, you know, how did it feel, though, being able to get the player of the year? Uh, it, it meant a lot, man. It meant a lot. Yeah, like you said, I did. I wanted that championship and uh, just to have something to brag about back to back. But, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. player, player of the year also meant a lot. Can't downplay it like it wasn't like it was a son that I worked hard for and, and wanted to accomplish because it was. Right. Um, so for my own selfish reasons, yeah, I, I, it was one of the best accomplishments I've ever had. Awesome. Man, awesome. So, you know, talk a little bit about, um, you know, you ended up going to Cecil. Uh, and I definitely want to get heavy into that. Um, was there any other schools that you thought about going to or were getting ready to go to? What ultimately came down to you, you know, choosing Cecil? Um, I chose Cecil because because uh, I got to talk to talk to Lou because Lou and Bird were were friends at the time, so just getting to talk to him and and, and I knew I was going to go out there and get a feel for. For the campus prior to, to that summer prior to, to even going because I was going to take a couple classes. I mean, he was just everything he was talking about was putting you in a position to not only go there and play, but go there and actually receive a degree before you move on to your four year, which which was which set, which was a good, a good milestone and, and prompt sounded real promising. So that had a lot to do with me uh, choosing Cecil. You know, I went up there for uh, for a class during the summertime for a week and then uh, I came back home. Absolutely hated it. Told my mother I wasn't going back. <laughs> so really? You can go ahead and try to call you and me us right now because I'm not going back. <laughs> <laughs> what made you change your mind? What happened? Huh? Her and Dave what Bird, made you change your mind? Her and Dave Bird made me go back. 
That's what's up. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hey. Made me go back late that Sunday night, man. And 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 then I went back that next weekend and, and had a ball. You know what I mean? Just yeah. That that first week was just a little bit of homesickness, you know what I mean? Not not the, yeah, not yeah. Home, but and then that second week, man, just had a ball, had a ball, and, and from there on, man, it was it was history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and one thing I, I I loved about you know your coach and at CISO, and you can even maybe talk to, about him a little more if you like, but he talked about the, the talent on the shore. And that's another reason why I do this show because, I mean, man, you know how it is. And you even said in one of the things I read about, you know, you know, people forget or don't know how much talent is here, man. I mean, so much talent on the shore that's come, you know, before us, uh, during our time, and even after us, so much talent. After us, you know, the guys even from the South that came after you that were great, great players. And, you know, the coach at Cecil was one of those guys that, he knew it was talent here. He went and got those guys. So talk about, you know, you know, your coach at Cecil and even some of the guys that uh, went to Cecil that was there while you were there that maybe some people might not know or forgot about. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, for one, just to talk on one point, the, the lack of mm -hmm. publicity in this area at that time was, was, a, was a reason why uh, people didn't know that there was a lot of talent down here. You know, I mean, that had a yep. lot to it, and and also no disrespect to any coaches at the time, but the lack of recruiting in the area. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We didn't have, mm -hmm. we didn't have anybody recruiting us from here, which was my yeah. goal. For me. But uh, going to see some man, the, 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 the players that you meet up against while you're there, and and the players that you play with while you're there, you know, like my my freshman year was me, Kyle Moran. Uh, you got Glenn Nelson. We call him mm -hmm. G Nasty. He was from Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, point guard, <clears throat> hand us out of this world. Hand us out of this uh, world. Also played with another guy from uh from Baltimore named Dwight Dean. Dwight mm -hmm. Dean, but going in um, it was a it was an experience. You know what I mean? We we had to learn how to play with other city players, which Louis mm -hmm. made it real easy to do, man. Because in preseason he took us through through a lot through mm -hmm. HE double hockey sticks, brother. Like, and it was it was. Oh. Don't matter. Doesn't matter. Don't matter. We waking up six o'clock in the morning, hitting the, hitting the track, and and then gotta go and and practice right after that if you don't have class. But uh, summertime it was it was never ending. Preseason is preseason was was hard, but you got you, you get through it. It makes you better. You know what I mean? We put everybody pushed yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you said that too because when people don't understand. Like, you know, high school is one thing, man, but college, that work you got to put in college, I mean, my, you know, my best friend, uh, you know, uh, Gary, you know, Somerville, you know, he, he said the same thing, like the running you do in college <laughs> and you still got classes to take, you know what I mean? People forget, you know, you still got classes to take and stuff like that. You getting in, getting in tip top shape and working on your game and stuff like that, man. Like it, it can be a lot, you know, it can be a lot. So I'm glad that you, you, you mentioned that, you know, the work that you guys had to put in to, to be great. It's good and demanding, but at the same time, it's it's the transition from high school to 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 college is that ain't no ain't no mommy and daddy to run home to. That's it. <laughs> it you, you're, you're, you're a man now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So either you're gonna do it or you're not gonna do it, and then you got to go home and tell everybody why you chose not to do it. Mm -hmm. and everybody's mm -hmm. looking at you, yep. you're telling away because somebody yelled at you. Like, come on, mm -hmm. because somebody tried to right. help you to be a better person or be a better version of yourself. That's real. That's real, man. Thanks for that. Yeah, and that's what yeah, that's real. Man, Louis was a. He didn't care from the. He don't. He didn't mm -hmm. care how good you were or how bad you were. He's gonna push everybody the same and treat everybody the mm -hmm. same. Mm -hmm. When when did you when did you that year your freshman year going to Cecil? When did you feel like? You know, of course, you've always been a confident person. When did you feel like you know I've been putting the work in? I mean, I'm in tip top shape. You know, I, I, can, I can do some things. I mean, because, you know, I'm not going, you know, I mean, you know, you were scoring 32 and 29, hitting six, seven threes. And I mean, it, but it, you, you was making it look easy. I'm saying it like that because you was making it look easy, but it wasn't easy. Like you right. put the work in and, and, and the results showed. But, what, you know, was there a game or was there a time that you felt like, you know, your confidence kept gaining? you like, you know what? You know, I, I, you know, I, can, I can do some things here. It, it's really like for a player, man, it wasn't even a game. It was just a style of play. 
Like it was mm, similar, okay. to, similar to the Pokemon style of play. So I didn't really have to change much. You know what I mean? Oh, and, wow. And, and that just worked out in my favor, honestly, because it's just create, creating opportunities to, to get out there and get it. You know what I mean? We pressed. Wow. We did the same as Pokemon. We pressed. We even had a, a starting, starting play at the tip. I don't know. If, it, it wasn't my junior year. I mean, it wasn't my freshman year. I think it was my, uh, my sophomore year playing. Um, Is that the lob, Kyle? You used to think the lob? Oh, man. Every game. <laughs> That's how you start a game. When Coach Lewis drew that up for us, man, we were excited about that one. Because it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Even if we didn't get the tip, somehow it was going to happen. From a steal or something. But we'll talk about me and Kyle connection a little later. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I love that. That's a good. That's good. We're going to get there. We're going we to get there. I got one more question before we get there, though. Um. And, and, and like you said, I'm, I'm glad you, you you laid that foundation out about, you know, what you, you know, that confidence and that play, because I tell people a lot, man, like, and, and you know, me and Gary were talking about this early because he ended up going to Frederick and um, I think he played against y'all a couple of games as well. But coaching and style matters a lot, man. Oh, yeah. Like coaching and style matters a, a lot because there are some coaches and styles that, that, that can hold you back. And I'm glad you shared that, man, because see, I didn't know that it was the same style. So be able to press and, Get in the passing lanes and and you got coaches, you know, first set of game. Hey, I want I want the lob play. Like, hey, I mean, you are gonna run through a wall for a coach like right. that? You know what I'm saying? So you know, you saying that, man. Like, thanks for sharing because you know that that, that means a whole lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, a whole we, lot, we all, so. you know, yeah, he gave us two lot two lob plays. I mean, he gave us the freedom to to have fun. I mean, as long as we did what he demanded of us, which was lock down, mm-hmm. play defense. You know what I mean? And and, and get in the passing lane. Just just. All, just flat out play effort just give it your 110 mm-hmm. mm-hmm. percent and, and and he'll give us i mean we had some set plays on offense but for the most part he gave us freedom i mean we had another uh, another another play i mean nobody knew what it was we implemented it and it was like this kyle would do this he would let the ball go and would do this on the way coming up the court and mm-hmm. it's a setup for a lot wow i think we, we did i think we did that the second uh, when we played uh chesapeake at, at salisbury when we came down, because uh, I, I don't think I started that game for whatever reasons. I'm not even gonna say, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know what I mean? I'll read about it. As soon as, <laughs> as, soon as, uh, as soon as I got in the game, they caught Louis immediately called that play, man, and caught it on somebody backwards. Ooh. Everybody, went, everybody went crazy. Yeah, yeah, and, and and that's a great. I guess that's a great segue too, because I was going to ask you about that. That's a you guys. I, that's another thing that I posted. You, Kyle, Moran, it, it said the homecoming. You know, you guys combine. You guys combine for sixty-two. Man, I want you to talk a little bit about what it meant to come back to the shore and and play against Chesapeake at SU. And even though you came off the bench, you, you know, you you. I don't know if you was mad or. or or what happened? Because you came in on fire. Because you you ended up with thirty two points, six three pointers. Uh, you know what I mean. Moran had twenty seven to fourteen, and, and and Kyle dished out ten assists. So you know, talk a little bit about you know how I felt to come home and, and that support you guys got. You know, from the short love you guys got, and playing with those guys too. Oh man, it was it was, it was man. We couldn't wait. We we wanted that was the game we wanted. Couldn't wait for all, all season long. Other than moving on that. Going home in front of our people. We haven't done this since high. We haven't done this in a few years, and, and just to pack pack the house, man, and be able to be able to see everybody that we couldn't see all season, the ones that couldn't travel to come watch us play and things like that. Just to be able to see all those people, you know, what I mean, that watched us in high school come together and and support mm-hmm. us at a different stage it was amazing, man. It was a blessing. Mm-hmm. Man, I bet, man, I bet. That's a, that's a beautiful thing, man. It's just like we said, man. One thing about the shore. No matter what, they're going to support, man. They're going to support, man. So, sure. yeah, yeah. So that's that's dope, man. That's dope. Um, I, I want to ask you. I want to ask you this, um, and, and you can let me know how to, you know, how the journey went and, and recruiting wise. If I'm not mistaken, so after your freshman year, mm-hmm. you, uh, you red shirt, right? That's right. not knowing how to do. Either. You, you might red shirt as soon as you get there, or red shirt in between. Because if I'm not mistaken, I think I think Craig did the same thing. He played. Red shirt it then play played again. Right, right, right. Um, so talk about the recruiting. Cause I obviously, like you said, you know, you know, you want to get to a four year. Um, so but before, if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong, before 
your your reassured sophomore year, you already knew where you were going to go for your four year. You know, talk talk about how that how that went. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you know, correct me. Yeah, you, tell me about that. Uh, before my sophomore year, before I, I wanted to, my, I was determined to sign and wanted to sign before I started my senior year, just to get that out of the way, not to have anything to, to think about. Yeah. Um, but the start, the start of the recruiting process was for me and Kyle were was crazy. You know, I mean, we spent yeah. that whole off season pushing each other to 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 be better. He was pushing me to be stronger. You know what I mean? I was I was pushing him to to be confident and take that shot. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because that's what we mm-hmm. didn't need. And, and from there on, man, we pushed each other in the weight room, on the track. Mm. Basically, it was an all-out competition between me and him all all year long, and that and that, mm. that made us better, made us a lot better as players, and and built our chemistry significantly. That's what's up. That's what's up. Because I know I knew it had to be you know somewhat of a a weight uh, lifted off for you to be able to you know have a school pick you know, before you go into that next year and not feel that added pressure, you know, sometimes how that can be. Um, talk about, uh, you know, obviously you end up going to, to Fresno for people that don't know, you know, you know, picking Fresno State. But can you talk about some of the other schools that you could have went to? And I have some on the list here, uh, if, you, if you don't remember all of them, but some of the schools you could have went to and then ultimately why you chose Fresno over those other schools. I, I, if I can remember, I had like St. Bonaventures, um, Indiana, mm-hmm. Florida, Florida, Texas, mm-hmm. Texas. Yep, that, that's where Craig Craig was at. Craig went to Texas. Um, yeah. My whole mindset going into that was, man, I have two years to go in and and play and try to prove myself to move on to the next level. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I didn't want to go. I'm not going to say it was a maybe a timid thing to do. I didn't want to go anywhere and have to compete for a spot. Well, not even necessarily compete because I had to compete at Fresno, but my, I had a better chance of competing. I felt like I had a better chance of competing at Fresno rather than Florida or or um, Texas. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Texas, they had a lot of guards as well. Um, but that that's the that's that was my main reason for it. And then the, the trip to Fresno. Uh, when I went on, that was nice, man. Uh, it was it was amazing. Not only the weather that, that that set it off at first, but then just getting there, yeah. it feeling itself, the, the city itself, feeling like home. Um, just That's what you said felt too. Like, yeah, felt like a natural feeling. Felt like it's somewhere I was supposed to be. You mm-hmm. know, I, mean? I didn't have a, a dull feeling the whole time I was there, and, it, and I enjoyed myself. Um, uh, Dominic McGuire. And Quentin Hosley which recruited me on my uh, well, pushed me mm. on my recruitment trip. And uh, Dominic, where are you playing? Playing the league, played for the Warriors. You know, I mean, he's doing big yeah. things in San Diego right now, um, playing as well. And Quentin Hosley, he's played overseas as well for for a long stint. So those guys right there hosted me on my recruitment trip, showed me showed me love, man, and it just was a good feeling. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah. And, I, and I think I those recruitment trips can be fun. I, and I don't know what was it was it Fat Joe that was performing. Uh, going that trip, right? Joe and Remy, huh? Yeah, 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 that's dope, man. That's dope, that's dope. So, so I know, like you said, man, that was a good feeling to be able to to get that off your back, I'm sure. You know, going into you know, what I mean, before you know, not have to worry about that, you know, you, you know as you play. Um, you know, and, and one thing I did want to say, and I might be going back a, a little bit, but how how was it to to, to reassure the year? How was it to sit and, and you know, you practice with the team, right? But you just don't plan against, you know, how was that process? How was that process for you as a competitor? Was it was it hard? Was it eat? You know, what I mean, talk a little bit about that too, if you don't mind. It in, in an aspect, I thought it was going to be hard. I thought it was going to be difficult because I can't sit here and practice and not reap the benefits of mm. being out there going and playing. You know, what I mean, on the on the back. Yeah. But it also was a huge learning experience because I mean, I, I got the advantages of being able to get better on the court and off the court without being out there so i'm it, it, and, and i'm watching it all because we mm-hmm. take that we we have to take we take during that time we took stats of every game while while they're playing so no matter where we went we still travel with the team and 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 took care of that stuff and uh just being able to watch it watch watch your watch a system that you're already in and you, you've already played in and, and mm-hmm. learn what to do what not to do 
uh, from from the one and two standpoint with me and Kyle. That's what that's how that's that's what made us so efficient. And, and great, great, great segue. Talk about you know we we've uh, handed around it. You know what I mean. But but talk about you know just how lethal you know you and you and Kyle was. So like I said, you know in school. You know, Kyle was always that 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 big guard, that unselfish guard that could do so much. I mean, he he could he could post, he could handle, uh, he could finish, he could dunk on you. You know, he could hit the three. You know, and and him being a, a basically a four time point guard and you being that score. You know, talk about that one two punch. You talked about the workout put in, but talk about that one two punch and how it catapulted catapulted all into a great you know great season where you end up being uh, not just the JUCO chance but national chance. Well, yeah, man. Kyle, Kyle pushed me, and I pushed Kyle. We just created a bond that that basically couldn't be broken at all, man. We 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 did everything together, whether it was eating, working out, like that didn't matter. We went everywhere together, you know what I mean? Took rides back to the shore together. That summer, we were, I mean, that whole year, we were uh, inseparable, you know what I mean? And it, it created a bond on and off the court, and just let us know, even though that we were rivals in our old school. You know what I mean? In our high school days, like, but you know, I mean, we, we had each other back from then on. Yeah, and that just made yeah. it made it a little more little little easy. You know what I mean? Only, and, yeah. and once they see us doing that, once the rest of the team team sees us doing that, it's easy for them to just fall right in the top, fall in the play. That's dope. That's dope, man. Like you said, because you know, and that's why I say the shorts stick together. Because like you said, you know, high, you know, high school rivals. You know, we talked about the rivalry, but you know, the bond and and the, and the closest. You know, you guys had, you know, you know, brothers to this day, man, you know, you know, that's the stuff you take with you, you know, in life, you know what I mean? So, you know, that's, that's dope, you know, the fact that y'all was able to, you know, form that bond and, uh, you know, because the closest off the court helps when you're on the court, you know, it, it does, you know, it de- it definitely, it definitely helps. So, you know, you, you guys end up doing great things. Um, uh, you know, I, I read about you guys at the one point victory, uh, you know, I think, I think it was against, uh, uh, Kirkwood. Uh, community college of Iowa, one point win. Uh, you had twenty six, uh, uh, six three balls in that in that game. Uh, anything that that stands out, or or anything you you remember about that? That whole tournament was was amazing, man. We the, the game before we won that won that game at the buzzer by a block. Wow, get out of here! A block, yeah, a block at the rim by Les Simmons. Yeah, man, we had wow, <laughs> that's crazy. To everybody on that championship team. You know, maybe we had Les Simmons, Joel Green, um, Emmanuel Jomo, like I said, G Nasty, you know, mm-hmm. and Keyron Shirt. Um, I'm forgetting anybody, I apologize, but everybody on that team, man, none but love. Wow, man, that's that's awesome. Like you said, 33 and two uh year, you end up being the uh NJCAA Division II Player of the Year. Um, I mean, we talked about Player of the Year in high school, but to get it in, in college, man, like, like you know, what, what's that? What's that feeling like, man? Uh, unreal, man. Unreal. Never thought I. Was, I mean, I just went out there and played, but never thought it was going to get to that. But when, once that was announced, I was amazed, man. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 awesome, man. That's awesome. Like I said, man, you you always been a. A, a, a humble dude, man, and and you know a lot of the stats you put up, man. I could I could ring out stats for the next hour or some of the games and stuff. You know you put up in college, man. It's just you know I was just reading and I was enjoying myself uh, over the weekend, man. Just sitting back and just just reading and and just soaking all that in because you know you know I mean, you know how life is, man. Like you know we're the same age, so it's you know time going. I remember in real time like some of these events, but you don't remember every detail, like, you know what I'm saying? And, and statistics and stuff like that. Because like I said, you know, me and Tony, we always make sure we, we follow if I seen something or he seen something, he tell, you know what I mean? Right. So, but right. to sit back now at, at 36 and, you know, sit back and read it and, and think back, like, man, man, y'all did y'all thing. Y'all yeah. did y'all thing. So yeah, it was dope. It was dope. And, and you end up, uh, I mean, the score you did at, in a short period of time at Cecil, uh, scoring over 1,200, uh, I think, like, top 10 in scoring uh, in the Hall of Fame. I mean, a, a bunch of accolades. I don't want to miss nothing. I don't, I don't want to mess nothing up. But, um, I mean, what you accomplish that before we move on to Fresno, what you accomplish at Cecil as a whole, uh, I mean, you should be – I mean, I know you're proud of, man, but it's huge, man. Like, all the names that came through there, 
Uh, I got another, you know, thing with different people from the shore that were there that I'm a post. It's just, man, it's just great. You know, and I tip my hat to you, man. And all you guys, man, for, for really laying down the blueprint for a lot of these guys that came behind y'all, you know, you know, on the shore, man. So, you know, I, I tip my hat for sure. You know, for sure. You all had that same yeah. dream, man. And, and to any kid out there, ain't ain't too hard to get out. All you got to do is put your mind to it, man. You can go anywhere, do anything you want to do. That's what's up. That's real. That's real, man. That's real. So, so Fresno State, man. Like I said, man, Cali, California, IA, man. Like you know, what I mean, I, I, I love Cali. My dad, uh, my dad stays in Cali, so I, I try to get out there every year when I can. Um, you know, like you said, you said it felt like home, and that's one of the things I read that you said one of the reasons you chose it felt like home and had a great coach. Uh, you know, when you first went out there, you know, just you know, before you even talk about the ball and before you get that, just, just how, how, you know, just how was it, man, being it, being on the West Coast and just being in a new environment. After season, man, that was amazing. Just the, just, just the, the palm trees and the good breeze, man. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> right, right. That's, that's love, man. And then the people are so, so welcoming. Like it ain't no mm-hmm. negative vibes out there. Everybody you pass is smiling, and enjoying themselves, having a good time. You know what I mean? It's not like I mean, trouble happens everywhere, but it's just peaceful, mm-hmm. very peaceful. Right, right. And with the people making you feel like home, it's just like, hey, I'm, I'm in a good place. I mean, I couldn't, couldn't have picked a better place. And that confirmation right there was everything. Wow, um, talk about the 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 work and the difference. If you know, if if there was one, a lot for you as far as you know the work. You talked about getting up early in the morning, running the track at sea. So you know, having to practice before class. How was that now at Fresno? Was it pretty similar? You know, uh, I'm sure Cecil prepares you. Uh, greatly for that, but talk a little bit about how that was at Fresno, man. Just the uh, uh, the diff- Well, it's not too much that can make you that that Lewis can't do it and make you ready for the next level. So he <laughs> that right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did an amazing job at what he did, man. He he put us through every test that you could possibly think of, man. But the difference in mm-hmm. in that is just the schedule. You know, what I mean, the different schedule. Oh, okay. The difference in the scheduling because you got, I mean, you're gonna have a lot more practices, whether they're individual practices or team practices, whether they're 30 minutes or an hour and 30, you know, what I mean, it's all throughout the day. You know, what I mean, for, for a while, mm-hmm. there's a Cecil we had in the morning and then we had in the afternoon, just two set, two set times, and that was it, where you might have three or four, whether during, during that, uh, during a basketball scan, standard or four year. Uh, okay. That's, that's, the only, that's the only difference with the scheduling for me. And, I mean, the training, a little bit, we did a lot, a lot more heavier lifting there. You know what I mean? We did training mm-hmm. with football coaches instead of actually, they were, because our football team was amazing back then. But um, those, those coach, those training trainers did an amazing job with us as well. Uh, I think back then I was benching probably like 260. So it, they, they, they got me mm-hmm. up there. Uh, that's what's up. That's what's up. And, 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 and like you said, and the reason I'm sure that was for because, you know, the, the talent gets even, you know, even more elite at, at that level, you know, so, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, you know, some of the talent you played against and, and you know, whether it's a, a person that sticks out to you, a, a team that sticks out to you, a, a situation or just in general, anything you, you want to share about some of the talent you went against in those two years. Ah, oh, man, it was amazing talent. You know what I mean? The, the wax, is, it was, it was, it was yeah. difficult. You know what I mean? And we played yeah. great teams. Uh, the Lopez t- twins at uh, Stanford. Oh, yeah. Played against uh, the guys, man. Work at Robin. Work in the finals right now. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. And they were amazing. Uh, played against uh, a dude named Nick Fazekas at uh, Nevada. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Nevada. Yeah. I remember him. Yeah. He could boogie. Played against Javel McGee at New Mexico. I think mm. it was in Mexico. Or no, mm-hmm. he was at Nevada mm-hmm. as well. Mm. Yeah, uh, Nevada, Nevada, my bad. Nevada yeah. as well. After uh, after Nick um, played against Brad Bayless, Arizona, he was mm-hmm. a complete dog in his college era, man. He, he mm-hmm. didn't have much of a long stint in the league, but that, he was tough at Arizona. He gave yeah, our guard, yeah. He gave our point guard some 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 problems. He was t- he he Bayless was tough, man. He he yeah. was like you said, he had a long stint in the league, but he was he was tough. I remember him. Yeah, he, he was bouncing yeah. back too. He caught yeah, a couple, he caught yeah. A couple lives on us. Yeah, it was tough. He was tough. That, those are those are some of the main players that I that I played against. That, yeah, that I remember. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. How big was uh? I mean, I'm actually working on TV now, and Javale 
Shout out to JaVale. He just uh, got added to the Olympic team. Uh, going to take it, but man, how big is Javel and Brooke in in person? I mean, like I said, you you know sometimes people look at us, you know, six three, six four. They think that's all, man. These guys are seven footers. I mean, talk about that height. You know, what I mean, get used to that. Complete giants, man. It's yeah. it's hard to get that. You ain't no shoot, ain't, ain't no going through them. Ain't no going over top of them. It's just uh-huh. you just got to be smarter and faster. That's about it. Mm-hmm. Those guys mm-hmm. they, they covered the paint back then, but I mean that yeah. Is, Use your athleticism and get get by. How did you how did you feel your your game trans uh translated or, or transferred to to that level? Because I mean you still you know did your thing both years you know average double figures not if I'm not mistaken your junior year uh, right around eleven a game senior year, fifteen a game you you still shooting forty percent from three you know so you're still shooting you know shooting well so talk about how your how your game uh, transition I should say and also. Uh, can you tell people because a lot of people might not know that the the, the three point line, you know, you know, as far as your, you know, the difference with that as well. Oh, the three it, it changes the three point line changed by by a couple feet, so you know, mm-hmm. shoot a lot deeper deeper shots, but then yeah. just come with the training and things like that. But um, the transitioning part of it, man, it, it was different offense, so that that mm-hmm. made it that, that was a little difficult. It was more of a structured offense for me rather than. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rather than the, the normal I was used to, um, a lot of people from home got mad at me, asking why I wasn't doing more. But I mean, it's just the flow of the game. You gotta, you gotta, right? Play your position and, and, and stuff like that. He, Cleveland wasn't too big on freelancing, so uh, mm-hmm. so it was pretty structured. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people don't understand that. You know, yeah. you talking about like we talked about coaching before. Like people be like, why you ain't do this? Right? Like you can't just like you know, it's different. Like you can't just go out right. there and do. Yeah, I'm with right. you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, So I mean. Yeah. Just, just get yours in the flow of the offense and, and, and just playing for them, man, playing in that arena. I think it was either 17, 20, 17 or 27,000 a seat. Just, just mm, uh, was, when they got, when we played Stanford and, and a few other teams, man, it was completely sold out and you can't, like, we got a hold up sign. You can't even hear the coach. Like wow. they, at that point, it ain't no, ain't no him calling up. That's, that's when you get to freelance when it's, when it's, when it's times like that. That's when <laughs> right. If you can't, the only thing he can do is call a timeout at that point. But if you're going, mm-hmm. then he's going to go with it. <laughs> so that's the only yeah, time you yeah. really let loose a little bit. And it was a few games I let loose, but just the overall, yeah. man, college, that college experience was amazing, man. We got to the NIT, um, my yeah. junior year as well. And yeah, was that was that uh, Georgia? I think y'all was on ESPN too. I, I remember watching that. Yeah, against Georgia. Yeah, you remember. did your thing, man. Uh, I can't remember his first name, but the Gaines kid, he was he was tough, real tough. Oh yeah, was that was that Reese Gaines? Yeah, Reese Gaines. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, Reese Gaines, Reese Gaines. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. He was too. He was super tough. Yeah, yeah. And any other games that that that, that stick out, or whether the uh, you know personal best was um. I know you had, uh, and, and, and you might got to correct me, I think this might have been your career high at Fresno, but I know you had 30, uh, I think, against Boise State. Um, but any other games that that, that, that stick out to you? Uh, I know you also had uh, 27, seven threes against Idaho. Uh, so like I said, man, you were still shooting. Well, you were still shooting that. That's what I said. Well, you, somebody was sitting here, you weren't a shooter, but you was a sniper, man. Like, you know, <laughs> any, any, anything else? You were, you were a sniper, man. Anything else to stick out to you? Um yeah, we had a we had a home game. Well, not a home game, a away game in South Carolina. And uh, mm. shout out to the Rev down in Atlanta, Virginia, Pastor Gary mm. Miller. He 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 got everybody yeah. bust everybody up and got everybody down there to South Carolina to see me play. Mm. Me to see me play oh, that's man. what's up. And yeah, that was, that was an amazing experience. I was able to put on a show for them at that level. You know what I mean? During that time, oh man, I think I had twenty seven or thirty that game against them. Against oh, that's dope. And that was that was that was a great experience, man. Just having them come down. They traveled all the way down and be able to put on a show for them once they once they drove all the miles to get there was and get yeah. them. Man, that was a good good experience, man. It was, it was oh man. Oh man, that mean a lot right there. Oh yeah, for sure. That mean a lot to me, man. Yeah, that mean a lot. Yeah, that's what's up. That's dope. That's dope. So, you know, with with your your, your college career coming to a close, you know, talk about you know, um, you know, becoming a pro and all that came in, you know, you and you can kind of walk us through, you know, whether it's you know, hiring an agent and, you know, going through the process and, you know, you know, just, just talk a little bit about, you know, you know, becoming a pro and what that, 
Uh, I don't think a lot of people understand what that process is like. Right, right, right. First of all, we, we, well, I, well, I know, well, I know people don't know. <laughs> Not I think I know I, they don't. <laughs> uh, we forgot a big part of that puzzle, Mr. Jareem Dowling. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Major, 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 major part of it all. Major part of the process, especially leaving CISO. And, and he's part of the reason why, the big reason why I got, would sign with the agent I signed with, you know what I mean? To get the get the contract that I got down in Poland. Um, so mm -hmm. you shout out to him. He's doing big things right now at the college level. Awesome. Um, but just, he got, he, he kind of guided me through that experience of, of getting the, getting the age in and, and put me in a position to where I could go out to France for, first and, and to showcase my talents. And then uh, once I left mm. France, after a, a little stint with a team, then I, I went to Poland and that's, that's when I signed my contract out in Poland. Um, and, and from there on, man, it, it was, it was a ride. Yeah, 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 yeah. You said as a robber, you, 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 you was doing your thing, man. Because I can remember even uh, I pulled up some other day, man. Some of them highlights, or he was still high flying, dunking on people, or, or or hitting the three and and all that. I mean, what was the? Even, uh, and I tell you what, I'm gonna stop and say, even before I get to the ball part, because I was talking to um Craig about this a couple of years ago, and some of the stops that he had, and, and he was saying, you know, people always talk about some of the the, the glamorous. Uh, countries to go to, but there's also some other places that, you know, it, in particular, he had to go to. It was just different. Like, you know what I mean? It was culturally, you know, it was just different. So even for you, like, whether it was, you know, in France, it's, it's beautiful in Poland, you know, sure is as well, but just, you know, you're not in America anymore. So how was this that transition first as far as for life in life, you know, for you living? Yeah, because I mean, I mean, neutrally, everything in basketball is is the same, right? That, that language is the same, but right. you're just moving in right. the off the court. Nobody knows. You don't have too many people that know English. I mean, when you're in the bigger cities like uh, like Warsaw out in Poland and and things like that, that's that's where you normally feel more comfortable, or you your general you can conversate more because everybody knows English. But uh, my first thing I was uh, in okay. a small town called Inogroswalk, man, and it was a it was an older older vibe, older feel, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and on that side, it's primarily soccer that, that that they go support. So there wasn't too many supporters at the beginning of the season. Um, uh, and a lot of, a lot of, when you're out in the city there, when I was out in the city there, people are just, you know what I mean? Staring, they, they don't, cause they don't, yeah. that's a, you're a new face. No, like, no. That's new, you know what I mean? Cause you primarily have Africans and, and their nationality out there. But um, it was just, it was, it was different. But it, it it was fun because after about the fifth game, man, we got we got the winning and and mm. started coming out and it just got incredible. Every night the, the, it was filled because you were bringing not only mm. winning but you were you were bringing energy. You know what I mean? We all we almost yeah. put like one game out of the playoffs that year, but it was it was a good experience, man. You get to you go out and it's it's not because lack of knowledge, but they just don't they don't see us anymore. You know what I mean? They don't see us out there. So yeah. I mean, it, it's talking. You got translators that talk for you a little bit, like or the younger generations. They know English, so they can translate the what the barrier for you. But other than that, the barrier, other than the barrier, was it was it's amazing. That's good. That's what's up. What, what about teammate wise? Did you have other any other guys that you know um, you know spoke English, or how was that? You know, talking to your teammates and that that. Like... The good part about it is majority of the majority of the Polish guys they they knew English you know well enough broken English to be able to hold a uh -huh. conversation with you and there were some that were fully fluent with English you know what I mean I so there was no barrier when it came to, to to the team you know we were still able to gel I mean we all bumped heads at times but it, but it's still it just mm -hmm. you know, I mean made it gel even more yeah yeah that's what's up that's what's up and and and, and talk a little bit about um you know how long you know how long your, your pro career lasted and you know if there's any other stop that you you know made along the way as well for you know people that might not know yeah i played in i played in poland for four years so that was that was the longest thing i played in poland and uh after poland i went out to uh to saudi for a little while um out to a it was a religious country called medina one of the most beautiful mm -hmm. I've, heard of. I've ever seen man and yeah, that's the, difference out there, the difference out there is you're not allowed because you're not Muslim. You're not allowed to to basically do the inner city and things like that. So that's the mm -hmm. only difference. You, you're pretty much structured to to certain mm -hmm. boundaries. Um, but the place itself was amazing. The travel there was amazing. Full 24 hours, longest longest flights and layovers. I, well, longest flights. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't really much layovers, but train train rides and flights. And it was pretty long. Yeah. But it was it was. Yeah. Man, I wouldn't change it for the world. 
That's what's up. That's what's up. And and, and one more thing about the living, and I'm gonna hit you the best one. I'm I'm gonna get you out of here. Real Sports Fan Podcast, and I appreciate everybody listening. Got got Eddie Miller in the house. Uh, Eight thirty-five. I told him like, I'm gonna get him off here at a decent time, man. So, um, but uh, but I know I know one thing. Uh, Craig was sharing too, and and, and Andre a little bit too. Is a bit, you know, um, you know, eating, you know, food wise, you know, you know how? Yeah, I mean, how you know how how was that? Because me me, you know, people that know me, like I'm a very particular eater. It's only certain things I eat, so I'll probably have been hurting at certain places. So you know, how, how you know how was it with you eating, and then you know you you live in situations some of these places as well. Um, my living situation in every place was, was basically amazing. You know I mean? When I went to Medina, it was pretty much primarily out of a, a large hotel, but you know, every, every other place I went to, I had my own apartment and it was, they pretty much decked out, man. They allowed, if it wasn't decked out, then I, then I got it there within a couple of months. <laughs> other than that, other than that, man, the, the living was, was great. The food was a little, you know what I mean? You got to try yeah. things and it doesn't yeah. look- Sometimes it doesn't look the greatest, but then, yeah, I mean, you just got it. You got to try. Sometimes you, pre-game meals aren't what you want them to be, but you, you got <laughs> You got to try. You got to eat something, right? Yeah. You get the bad stuff later. <laughs> but, <laughs> but for the most, the food pretty was pretty good, especially yeah, in Poland. Yeah. Especially in Poland. Poland had some, yeah. some hidden restaurants where, where, no, where we wouldn't ever go to unless we were, were with Polish people, you know what I mean? Or, or Gotcha. Creating bonds with people that'll take you to good places. Um, so yeah, I've had some restaurants out there where that was pretty much amazing. That's what's up. That's what, and you talked about, um, you know, when you first went to Cecil, you know, getting homesick and stuff like that. Well, you know, how was it, you know, being away from your family, you know, in, a, in another country? You know, how was that at first? Or, you know, did it get easier, you know, as the years went on? Or, you know, you know, how, you know, how, how was that experience well, in a way? Well, that, I mean, that experience was pretty much. I mean, I didn't, I wasn't bothered at that point where there was no there was no homesick mm-hmm. sickness because I, I yeah so to then jump from Cecil to all the way to the West Coast that that, that was pretty true. Fun. I barely came home when I was on the West Coast because it's just a, such a good yeah <laughs> yeah you having a good yeah. time so you don't want to leave but um going out to Poland wasn't and over and everywhere I went overseas wasn't wasn't a bad what didn't have a bad feel at all wasn't homesick you know what I mean. When I got to Medina, a little bit at the end of the Medina situation, I wanted, you know, I mean, was trying to get back home and, and, and uh, mm-hmm. towards the end, towards the beginning of it, it started getting a little rough. But it's just yeah. too confined, too confined. You know what I mean? When you're in a place where yeah. it's so confined, it's kind of hard if you don't have freedom because you're all the way away from your people. You know, what I mean, like you don't want to just you want to create bonds with people, right. do stuff instead of just sitting around. Um, so right. that got a little hard. But other than other than that process, it was. Everything else was amazing. That's what's up. That's what's up. And then, you know, we talked a lot about off the court, but on the court, you know, mm-hmm. you know, whether it was in Poland or Medina, um, you know, how was it, you know, just, I mean, just kind of like you said, I mean, basketball is basketball at the end of the day. So, you know, you know, and one thing you know how to do is fill it up and, and put the ball in the hoop. So, I mean, just how was the experience, you know, on the court and playing against, you know, some of the guys you play against and, and you know, just, just your own, just your own performance. You know, on the court as well. You share a little bit about that, yo, ma. I mean, it got you had your you had your good nights. You had your, you had your bad nights. I mean, it, it was it was overall tough. It was all overall a challenge because the level. I mean, the level of play is is a little higher and it's a lot more physical. Mm-hmm. I mean, but it's. Just I was going to ask you about that. It's just something you physical, gotta, yeah. Adjust, yeah, it's just something you got to adjust to because a foul over here and a foul over there, buddy. <laughs> they no, got, yeah. Got, 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 got out of the air and then ain't no foul out there. So I mean, it's just. Hey. Just a lot more physical, but once you get adjusted to it, yeah. you're able to, to maintain and, and do what you need to do. Because that's that's out there. Yeah. That's what it's all about. It's all about putting putting wins on the board and filling it up. Yeah, yeah. You 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 caught you had some posters too, man. You caught you caught some cats out oh, there yeah. too, man. I I seen you too. <laughs> yeah, you, you caught you caught some cats, man. So that's 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 awesome. That's awesome. Um, any um before we uh before we close any. Um, I, I guess I don't want to say say reason, but what ultimately made you, you know, decide to, you know, stop playing, you know, and, and then come back, you know, what what went into that decision, and and any insight maybe you can share from, you know, maybe uh, uh, any uh, you know, young guys that's you know come behind you, you know, as well that that you know might want to try to uh, you know become a pro and stuff like that. 
Well, I mean, what, what basically led to it was a little salt. I was a little salty, a little uh, pissed off at the end of my my pol- Poland my Poland stint because they uh, the team the last team I played for went bankrupt, so they owed us a a nice little sum of uh, money, a nice little sum of money. So you know, I, I surpassed that and went to you know, I mean, once I went to uh, went to Saudi, I was, yeah. I was cool with it, but then being confined, so just a little bit of both. It was like, uh, yeah. you know, if I'm gonna deal with this, I might as well be on the state side and. Thank you. Got you. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. And I definitely, man, appreciate it. And, and just, man, just, to, you know, in closing, man, like, you know, uh, anything that, that, you know, you, you shared uh, some awesome stuff tonight, Eddie, man, I really appreciate it. And uh, and it's crazy because, like I said, we know each other for a minute, but it's the right. first time we sat down and chopped it up. I know we wanted to try to do this uh, in Cambridge in person or somewhere in person, and we'll hopefully still get to talk, you know, soon at some point, but I appreciate you being there to sit down and, and chop it up with me. But uh, anything else you can share for, for the young kids that aspire to, to, to be great and achieve some of the things you did uh, or any, any life lessons along the way that, you know, you can share for even guys that are, are in high school or maybe just coming out of college or anything that, you know, you could give them. I mean, you know, the, the main thing that I can let them know is that success is going to make you feel uncomfortable and uneasy. If you want it bad enough, mm. uh, you got to be able to fight for the uncomfortable times to get to it. You know what I mean? Whether it, it doesn't matter what it is. You know what I mean? It's, and you're going to lose people along the way, but that, that's that's the process. And you can't be afraid mm. to, to let people go because, I mean, everybody can't take that ride with you. Mm. That's it, man. That's confirmation for a lot of even for me, man. I was just sharing yesterday, uh, even in church, man, about, you know, sometimes God puts the uncomfortable situations, mm-hmm. like you said, in the, in the be great, man, like, you know, Sometimes we always want to be comfortable, like you know what I mean. But sometimes you got to be uncomfortable to get, you know, where where he wants you to be, man. So yeah, man, that's that's my, that's a great advice. Shout out to my aunt Michelle. She told me he would never put you in a situation that you can't handle. That's right. That's it, man. That's it, man. Never, never, never put you anything you can't handle. So that's that's great. And and look, I can't. I'm glad you said that too, my family. And I can't let you go. Anybody you want to shout out, family. Friends, anybody you might have missed that might have came to you while we're talking, but before I let you go, I gotta let you shout out anybody. I mean, you had a, an awesome journey. A lot of people helped you along the way. I know, like you said, you know, we can't remember everybody, you know what I mean? Charging to uh, uh, not our hearts, but our mind, right? But, you know, anybody else you wanna, you know, give a shout out to? I mean, I'm gonna just shout out everybody. Everybody that's that's been following me along my journey of life uh, along the way, man, I appreciate you and, and I respect you. Uh, shout out to my family, uh, my whole Miller family, my whole um, Henman family. I love all of you. My whole White family, love all of you. Um, shout out to my beautiful woman, Katie, and my lovely kids. That's it, bro. Appreciate you. Man, awesome, man. I appreciate you, bro. Like I said, man, we're definitely going to talk, like you said, and hopefully get up soon again, man. It's, it's, it's an honor, bro. Like, you don't understand. It's an honor, man, that that, that how you on here, man. Class of 03 representing, you, you know what I'm saying? Peace City in the building. You already know. So it was awesome, man. Real Swirl Sand Podcast. We out of here. Peace. Yeah. All right, Peace. bro. I'll talk to you. Thanks. Yes, sir.